You know, my background is not politics. My background is ministry, serving people. I believe that his legacy is being a man that moves from the spirit. I believe he's led by the Lord, and, and I think his decision to hire me was directly in line with just God's plan. Throughout 16 years as a pastor, and then transitioning in a leadership or authority position is to make sure that I'm utilizing that where I can serve my fellow man. So his philosophy is, let's reach all people, let's help all people, and he carries that out as far as what he's done. He's there, he's for them, and that's not a change in philosophy, that's who he is. Faith plays a role in every aspect of life. It, it plays a role as me being a dad or a husband or working around others. One of the key components that I've often thought and, and really adhere to is the power of prayer. I was very impressed that Congressman Walker was a part of the prayer caucus. Hearing members truly pray for each other and putting their faith first and leading with their faith literally at the beginning of every single week as they get their work started it was an incredible opportunity. It meant a lot to me to see. My faith informs who I am in really every aspect of my life, and that's true for him too, and it doesn't change. When your values are rooted in your faith, it's part of who you are, and it's part of how you operate. When it came to legislation like the Universal Charitable Giving Act, we wanted to make sure that whatever tax reform or tax law changes is that these wonderful organizations did not slip in any aspect in their ability to be able to serve, or you could say minister, to those who came from maybe impoverished or underprivileged communities. And we need people to hold up our arms. And so when people like Mark Walker, when he come in and he was like, Bonnie, how can I hold up your arms? What can I do to help you do what you need to do? He was very instrumental in getting us the support and the exposure that we needed to allow people to know who we were and what we stood for. He truly understood the importance of assisting these charities who are the ones who are the true boots on the ground and a lot of times they're the ones who are bridging the gap for those in need. I remember being part of the 114th Congress, became the first new member that year to pass legislation, specifically an anti-human trafficking piece of legislation. That was something important to me I, as a pastor. I had seen some of that. So to be able to come in and work on legislation that made it uh, a mandate that border agents or other people working with the government would have the proper training to spot out both a victim or, or a potential perpetrator, that was something that was important to us and it's one of the reasons that we wanted to get off to a strong start. Working for a member who is a pro-life advocate, I would say is absolutely important and imperative, especially at a time like right now. Working for a member who understands that this is beyond just a policy decision, this is a life or death decision, and fighting for that sanctity of life. Yeah, I, I don't think it would surprise most people for them to know me as someone who stands up for the least of these, to stands up for the unborn. We've been an advocate for life since day one. You know, when we talk about pro-life, sometimes we think we're only talking about those that are unborn, but to be authentically pro-life is to be an advocate for those who have been born but may not have the family part of it. So we wanted to make sure, because many of these incredible people who have a heart to adopt do not come from a background of wealth or means, but they're willing to make the kind of sacrifices to literally change the course of a, of a child, a baby's life. So we stood up and we fought hard to make sure that those tax credits would not go away. And I think that's something that we'll always be proud of. Congressman Walker worked to get Pastor Andrew Brunson back from Turkey after he'd been imprisoned for many years. He was in a very tough situation. In fact, he had some health problems and they continued to get worse and worse to the point we were worried about his life. We took a public role, began to uh, get the message out on social media, began to talk with the administration about this. Finally, as a group, we put enough pressure on the Turkish government, along with, with this administration, to have him released and to see him restored, see him healthy, and see him out there serving the Lord as a pastor once again here in the United States is something that I will certainly cherish. Any North Carolinian, where you've been a pastor or not, knows that North Carolina's favorite son has to be Billy Graham with Billy Graham being such a huge part of North Carolina's history and given the number of millions of lives he's changed. Uh, I think he is a hero and he's certainly a legend there in North Carolina. To have a role in making sure that uh, he had a chance to lie in state and, and to be there on that day was a very powerful moment. To do justice, love mercy, 
and walk humbly. That is something that Congressman Mark Walker represents in a very powerful way. That's who he is, and that's what makes him different 